Hello and welcome. I'm Pastor Kennan. Glad you joined us for Bible study tonight. I'm here with my good friend, Stoney Hughes. Uh, we're going to uh, be talking about what it means to have a virtuous life, and in particular, how we do that by being thankful. This is our final uh, lesson in this particular uh, series, Stoney. And uh, we've talked about how we, as, we are children of God so we can be thankful. We've talked about how God gives us everything that we need to overcome so mm -hmm. we can be thankful. Tonight I want to talk about generosity and mm. how generosity intersects thankfulness uh, because we're really seeking to grow into this new virtuous life that God is calling us to. Uh, and so we really want to do that well. And it's going to have to involve generosity of some kind because thankfulness, as you so eloquently pointed out last week, cannot stop it ourselves. That's right. It's got to move beyond that and into uh, affecting uh, the world and transforming the world around us. Um, and so, which just leads us to more gratitude. Sure. And so, um, it's very interesting because our passage that we're going to be studying is a passage of, about, it's a letter that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. And that church, the people in my congregation here at the campus know that I feel that <laughs> Corinth is basically New Orleans. Mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> it's, a, it's a port city. It's got all of the things that come with a transient place. It has all of the... Uh, hustle and bustle of a of a thriving uh, mm -hmm. metropolitan uh, city, but where a lot of trade is transacted and a lot of business is done and a lot of people come and go. Uh, and in places like that, I think of like Vegas or that kind of thing. Like what right. happens there stays there. Mm -hmm. and, you know, New Orleans was my backyard growing up as a Texas boy. And so this is where we came to play and leave it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that sure seemed to be right. Excuse me. Um, can I write, let me let's talk about something here. You're doing a good job, but let's talk about something here. <laughs> Seems like he spent a little time doing that, doesn't it? It really does. <laughs> it really does. Well, he's writing to them and he's talking about generosity. Mm -hmm. And so I thought we would just kind of use this as a lens to visit it. So I'm going to work uh, beginning in uh, Second Corinthians, actually, and. Uh, we're going to be uh, looking in chapter 9. I'm going to begin in verse 10. And since we unpack this, we can kind of go through. Now, he starts off using this kind of metaphorical, like, farmer language. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to need your help with this because right. I'm a city boy. You know, I was not a farmer. But I think that you'll be able to help me unpack this. Okay. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. There's that virtuous living we were talking right. about. There's that. So I, I kind of made that connection, but he who supplies seed to the sower, Paul is saying God's the source. Mm -hmm. God's the, the seed giver. Right. So Paul is uniquely kind of setting this up. Well, we, we uh, who, have what we can do, but in God's generosity, what did he give us? Right. Can't get any more generous than your son. Right. And he gave it to, gave it to us for a reason, so we don't have to worry about it. Yeah, so, so to, to really live a life of thankfulness, what I hear you saying is that it's a response. Like, yes. like it's, yes. it's first by God, and then Absolutely. it's a response to Always that. first by God. Uh -huh. And so, so God's initiating something here. It's important that we understand that, that if we're going to live a continually thankful life, which is what mm -hmm. God's calling us to, then <laughs> we have to understand that God's the source and we're responding mm -hmm. to that source. Sure. Um, okay, so... And that, that's what he means like bread for food, the bread of life. That's right. son. Yeah, so you nailed it. Okay, so you will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God mm -hmm. through us. Kind of funny how the weeks tie into each other, doesn't it? <laughs> it really is. Didn't we just talk about that last week? And it, we did talk about right. this. Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing stuff. And then it goes on to say, for the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, 
you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of sharing with them and with all others. Mm -hmm. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. What does that mean? The fun part about this, folks, is, is I didn't know what we were talking about today. He just kind of threw this at me. So that, that's kind of interesting that that's, you know, how you're closing that up. And that's the first thing. God always first. He gave us Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if we can keep that on our head, wow. Mm -hmm. You know. So why would this busy port city that's full of all this kind of that contextually, why do you think the church needs to hear that God is the supplier mm -hmm. and that they're responding to that? with hubris uh -huh. say more it, it, it's it's like every city today mm -hmm. you know when we need god when, when, when that when those back wheels are spinning in the ice first thing we do is god please get me out of this uh -huh. but when everything is going good are we thanking him for the good are we thanking him for the peace are we you know constantly reminding ourselves that he can save us from the bad but he also gets us through the good too he mm -hmm. gives us that so that we can get through it so, so is the city in dire straits and they've forgotten, you know, a lot of the pastors today um, are motivational speakers. He's breaking it down for them. You got to put God first. We have to live a godly life. Mm -hmm. They're not doing that. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping as a church you're going to do that now. Yeah, I mean, we did a lot of discussion last mm -hmm. week about being set apart, right, sure. for Absolutely. this. Absolutely. And that's exactly what this says. But so... What I love about this passage, too, is that it's really kind of pointing to the fact that it doesn't stop with God meeting our needs. Right. Right? Like, mm -hmm. that's not, uh, yes, God is a generous God, but there's a caveat, right? Mm -hmm. There's more to it than that. What do you think that more is? Hmm. Wow. What are we going to do with it? Ugh. What are we going to do with mm -hmm. it? You know? Just because God gives us something or puts us in a certain place doesn't necessarily mean that was for us. Mm -hmm. Maybe he needs us to be somewhere mm -hmm. to affect somebody's life. Mm -hmm. And maybe in his generosity of a job or a raise or maybe a city we didn't want to go to. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because we needed to be there. Yeah, and I'll tell, you, I'll, I'll tell you why I think this is important, especially for religious people, mm -hmm. right? And you know how I feel about that. Uh, yes, I do. But if, if you don't, go ahead. Uh, religion is for people who are afraid of going to hell, and spirituality is for people that have already been there. So, so okay. So having said that, mm -hmm. then what I want to what I want to think about here is is that if we're going to move beyond just this counting your blessings mm -hmm. thing, because that's a very beautiful thought, and it's mm -hmm. great on a T-shirt and a coffee mug and a bumper sticker count your blessings, mm -hmm. and I absolutely think we should do that. Often, though, that's kind of where we stop. Now, I heard a very, uh, very good, uh, very um, important uh, Christian leader mm -hmm. um, uh, say one time, hey, if you ever want to get out of a rut in your life, count your blessings. Sure. And, and no, he meant it. He's mm -hmm. like, literally, open up an Excel spreadsheet on your computer and just start naming them. Name the fact that you have green eyes. Name the fact that you have, you know, blonde hair. Name the fact that you got up today. Name the fact that you were in a warm bed. Name mm -hmm. the fact, like, I mean, he was like, literally count your blessings. And supposedly this was going to, this was going to help you to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to challenge that and push that tonight. Okay. Because I, I think that's a false short of really virtuous living. Mm -hmm. I don't think that you just get by in life by thinking about all the good stuff that God does for well, you. Well, virtuous living is not about you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank virtuous you. living yeah. is about what we do for others. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's how I see it. Uh -huh. You know, um, and and how we react to that is going to be very important. It's great. I like the, the idea of doing that because it creates, like we talked about last week, um, about new habits. 
reminding ourselves that there are things we need to be thankful for. Mm -hmm. and, and that could create a new habit for you. But that's not all it's about. It's not about us. Mm -hmm. It never has been. You know, so what are we going to do with it now? Yeah. How, are, how are we going to show our generosity and use what God has given us, and that may be where he puts us, how he puts us. How are we, we going to use that? What are All we right. going to do with it? So this really sets up perfectly our discussion because here it is. We're going to say right out of the bat that we're, we're going to set the bar at the fact that God is a generous God. Absolutely. There, we could count our blessings, and we would have a spreadsheet just full of, and we'd have 12 spreadsheets, mm -hmm. more than that, infinite spreadsheets full of things that we should mm -hmm. be thankful for because God supplies our needs. Mm -hmm. But this is supplying to a sower, uh, <laughs> somebody yeah. doing something, sure. right? Mm -hmm. So God is saying, okay, Port City, you active little vibrant Port City. I am the supply of real trade. Mm -hmm. You know, you may have ships coming into your port. You may have trucks coming on on your highways. You may have trains coming in on the tracks. But I'm the supplier. So we're just going to start tonight with God is the supply. Okay. But now, like you're saying, what do we do with that? What do we do th with that? And, and especially, what do we do with that in Jesus' name? Because mm -hmm. we're, we're here trying to learn the virtuous living of being a Christ follower. Mm -hmm. And Christ has said in the Bible, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. It's hard. Mm -hmm. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And we've already established that we can do the things that Christ calls us to. Mm -hmm. So if Christ Absolutely. says that we can do that, we can do we it. We can do it. So... <laughs> Well, in, in we some past discussions, we've, um, in, in your sermons and, and Brother Donnie's sermons and Brother Tom's sermons, we, we've kind of discussed what righteousness is. Mm -hmm. But how do we define what generosity is? Mm. And you have kind of caught me off guard with the subject, but I kind of like that because it makes me struggle. Um, there's a passage, I can't remember what it is, on how you're generous and what happens with that generosity. Mm -hmm. um, it talks about if you do something for someone, you know, if you open your mouth and tell somebody. Do you, do you remember that, mm -hmm. that verse? Yeah. Um, um, it's it, Matthew. It's Matthew? Uh-huh. Isn't it like five or six or something uh -huh. like that? Uh-huh. Can you hit us with that right quick? So maybe we can yeah, discuss totally. what generosity is and how you use it. Yep. Let me find it here. It's, it's, you know why I remember this? It's because it's, it's the Achilles skill of the religious people. And Jesus right. is always, <laughs> this, this is where he gets upset with them all the right. time, mm -hmm. is because they're hypocritical. He, uh, here it is. It's, it's Matthew 6. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. Mm -hmm. That means the praise of others is all they get. You're done. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret and your father who sees you in secret will reward you. Mm -hmm. And that's good. So now we've kind of looked at generosity in, in, in not a definition, but an attitude. Yeah. So, yes. and generosity can happen personally, mm -hmm. and then it can happen as a group too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what I love a, about this church, is there's a couple of ministries out there that we're not going around tooting any horns, but we're feeding 20,000 people. Yeah. We're doing things, yeah. and we're enjoying it while yeah. we're doing it, and we know why we're doing it. Yes. So in today's world, what about the person on the corner who's hungry? Mm. You know, what, what, what would, you know, I'm going to throw one at you now. Okay. What, what are we going to do there? Yeah. How do we handle our generosity when we know that maybe somebody's going to take that money that we give them and go get alcohol? Yeah. yeah. What, what do you do? I think, you know, in my mind... And this is built into our church's mission statement, which was, I believe what the Holy Spirit breathed mm -hmm. to life, is you meet people where they are first. Sure. You meet people where they are. And I think too often what we do that's a mistake in being generous is we assume that we know what people need. Exactly. And so I, I really believe that, you know, when you drive up to that person under the bridge and they're holding their sign and you're thinking, 
uh, I know better for them what they need than they do. Mm -hmm. You're really misguided mm -hmm. um, because if you would just take two minutes to have a conversation, sure. that person can tell you mm -hmm. what they're going through. Now, but also, does God look at your heart or theirs? What do you think? I think he looks at mine. Yeah, why did I do what I did? No matter what that person does, yeah. why did I do what I Almost did? Almost A looks at both. Sure. And, and so, because but, I think that God treats everyone the same. Absolutely. You know, like I think, I think but I, I hear what you're saying. And, and, and I do think that God looks at our motivations, the motivations of our heart. And there's a lot of scripture about that. There's a lot of scripture about. Well, that's, that's six right there. Yeah. Why did I do it? Yeah, exactly. You know, mm -hmm. I know why I did it. Yeah. He knows why I did yeah. it. So yeah. I think that's important. You know, one of the things that I think is beautiful is children. Mm. I think I have two beautiful kids and they love this guy. They I adore, love I adore this your guy. Family. They yep. love this man. So <laughs> I'll tell you, you, if your dogs or your children love somebody, pay attention because that's a good judge of character. It's good character. Hi, barometer. Caleb. <laughs> Hi, Olivia. <laughs> so, but one of the things I love about them is their pure motivation. Mm -hmm. Sure. And it peeks out all the time and it convicts me sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. just like that. Dad, are you going to pass that person and not help mm -hmm. them do something? Sure. And I'm like, oh, one day I was walking in a Costco and I was picking out some groceries or whatever. And Olivia was with us and she looked at us and said, Mom, Dad, can I go give that man a hug? Mm -hmm. She just identified a stranger. And, you know, a lot of parents would be like immediately, stranger danger. Right. You know, and I'm not saying that that didn't happen. A little mm -hmm. bit of that, you know, sure. kind of pause uh, happened. But she went and gave him a hug. We said yes. Mm -hmm. She went and gave him a hug. And he was like, oh. I mean, you could see he was touched. His mm -hmm. heart was touched. Mm -hmm. So this wasn't about throwing money in an offering plate or 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 doing anything. This was just a child's pure motivation to do something generous mm -hmm. and loving for another human being. And it, I mean, she taught us all a lesson that day. Mm -hmm. She schooled us. It was awesome. I, I think kindness is one of the greatest generosities out there. Yeah. If, if I could tell you a quick story. Um, I had just started a new job years ago and um, the paycheck had gotten lost. And it was a two week, we got paid every two weeks. And um, I needed to go to work, and the paycheck wasn't there. And I'm struggling, waiting for the mail person, needing to do this. I need to go to work, and I'm 45 minutes late for work. And um, all of a sudden, a vehicle pulls up in, in my driveway. And I'm going, well, maybe this is some weird mail. I was in rural Louisiana. Maybe this is some new mail truck. And an older gentleman comes out, and um, he says, uh, have you, I'm looking for a such and such, and it was his grandson. And this was right before Christmas. And um, he says, I'm looking for my grandson. And I had received mail for this grandson and kept it. And I guess he had lived there before I moved into it. And um, he said, I just need to find my grandson. We haven't seen him in three years. And here in the back of my head, I'm going, oh man, come on, I'm looking for my check, I'm late for work, I really don't have time for this. And I'm struggling on my inside. I really don't have time for this. So kindness was not being part of me at that point. And I said, sir, I need to go to work. And he says, we haven't seen my grandson in three years. And all of a sudden, I just felt like something came over me. And, he, and God did a work on me because he stopped me in my tracks. And I forgot about everything. And I said, sir, let's talk about it. Let's find out what's going on. And I knew some people, and I, I, we had a conversation. I'll try, I'll try to help you find your son through my security, you know, avenues and stuff, uh, your grandson. And um, we talked, and we talked, and I said, sir, I really just need, I'd like to pray for you. And he says, well, and I had told him that I was kind of born again. He says, well, well I'm Catholic. And I said, sir, God doesn't mind who I pray for. It's okay. <laughs> it, it'll be okay. Yeah, right. And so I prayed for him, and I just took those few minutes to affect his life. Mm -hmm. And that man, he must have been almost 85, and he bounced back to his car, and he mm -hmm. drove away with a different spirit. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes kindness is, is just a generosity that we're losing today. 
Oh. That man was a complete different person when he left. And yeah. I just, I thank God. I stopped all my steps. And I pray, thank you, God, for stopping me. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. And, you know, your point is such a good one and it's such an important one uh, because you're right. There's so, we, we think we're trained here so much that, that money is the way that you're generous. But let me tell you, um, the food ministry that we have, Breadstick Together, what I love is that there's this older couple who comes and picks up the pots and pans at the end of the night and they bring them back to the church mm -hmm. and they wash them together. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be involved in the food ministry part because they're vulnerable. Sure. They, they could easily contract COVID, but they want to be a part of it. And so they don't need to be seen. Mm -hmm. They come here every week and they take those dirty dishes and they go to the kitchen and the two of them wash them together mm -hmm. and they serve the Lord that way. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. I feel like my kindest generosity that's like that is my expense report. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I hate paperwork uh -huh. <laughs> like that. Right. Monotonous paperwork or sure. reporting paperwork mm -hmm. like that. That is an act unto God. I only do it for mm -hmm. God. Okay. <laughs> but no, there's, there's so many things, Tony, that people do with their time mm -hmm. and their talent. I watch the, the, you know, every weekend we have uh, worship here at the campus that, and, and online um, mm -hmm. that involve musicians and, and some of them are, are uh, volunteers and mm -hmm. they bless me, mm -hmm. uh, you know. So there's just so many ways that people are generous outside of money, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, money is great and it's terrific. And I believe that God uh, gives certain people a gift for giving money. And, and I think that's terrific and we need that too. Mm -hmm. but, um, but I'll tell you, there are many, many other ways to be generous. Oh, absolutely. And one of the challenges being the director of security here is to make sure that we, number one, we have a safe campus for people to worship. And, and we're there. We, we've got a couple things we're working on. But... Broadmoor hasn't missed a beat. Mm. They haven't missed a beat. They've met the challenges. We talked about overcoming some stuff last week. A and this, for me, at first being an outsider and then being welcomed in by y'all, um, one of the most amazing things is this is just some of the sweetest soul people mm. I have ever met in my entire life. Mm -hmm. The generosity, the kindness, the drive to want to do for others, you know, meet people where they are. You know, to church, you know, at one point in time, you know, priests and pastors moved around. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what they did. They didn't have this. They may have had a building, but they had to move around and preach mm -hmm. the gospel. So they had to go where the people were. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things I really like about, you know, being involved with Broadmoor is that just that compassion and generosity and caring about people. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Well, you know, what's awesome about that, too, is that. Every single bit of that, when we live that virtuous life and when we are generous in all mm -hmm. of these different ways, we make God famous. Yeah, in a way, yeah. You know? Yeah. If you think about it, because even if somebody says, Stoney is such a nice guy, I love the way that he gives and shares his kindness and his generous heart with, with the church, they're saying, because you're marked by God. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first thing we said, we're children of God in this, right. in this series. Absolutely. We're a child of God. You're marked by God. You're a mini Christ. Set apart. Right. Set apart. Mm -hmm. Right? You're making Christ famous. You're bringing glory and honor to the King of Kings. When I first started uh, give me goosebumps. reading the Bible and, and really becoming a Christian. I was raised in a Lutheran church, but I really got Jesus in me years later. Um, a lot of my friends were affected by that. Mm -hmm. and, and one of their comments, were you trying to be like Jesus? <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Good, good point. Yes, I kind am. Kind of the point. Kind of the point. Mm -hmm. You know, it just it made me think about that when you were talking about, you know, not making him famous, but that's the, that's the point. Yeah, right. I can't, I can't be him, but I can emulate him. I can try. What was the greatest act of generosity of all time? His is life. Jesus Christ, yeah. you know, and, and, the, and the way that, and, and God even says in the Bible, there is no greater love than to lay your life down for someone. That's right. 
And so the fact that Christ did that for us is the greatest act of, of generosity ever. And, 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 no the, one, and the perfect example yeah, of it. No one he could have left at any time. Of course. Of course. Or they didn't even have to come to begin with. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cushy and peaceful, mm -hmm. I'm sure, in heaven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? But to walk and come to, like, purposefully come to a broken place mm -hmm. like this and then do what, what so Christ did. Here Paul is talking to um, this city, and now Broadmoor is centered in Baton Rouge mm -hmm. with its opportunities for improvement. Yeah. Um, you know, I think Broadmoor is in a good place right now. Absolutely, and here's why I think that. And this is the experience I've had in mission here at Broadmoor, mm -hmm. is no matter what our plan is, any generosity that we can conceive of, mm -hmm. God multiplies it. Sure. It's just like you might as well put the X down and, and draw the line for the for the for the uh, uh, the the math to happen because no matter what we tried, you know, we thought, oh, we're going to put this generous feeding program out there, and we started, right. and we were like, oh my goodness, we're up to eighty people. Well, a week. that's what I was going to ask you when yeah. you, when y'all started Red Stick. Yeah. Now where are you? Oh, I was thinking eighty people a week was awesome. Right. And then the pandemic hit, and we were hit with the question: Do we need to shut this thing down? And I was like, we can't. Well, the first thing that had to happen is some generosity had to happen, mm -hmm. right? There to keep getting, it open. Are you getting there? And are let you, me tell you, immediately some grants came in, mm -hmm. a big ones, mm -hmm. good ones. And God multiplied the mm -hmm. money. So the money became a non-issue. Because grants came, and then some big gifts came in, uh, you know, some folks who gave money. Mm -hmm. And then... We had so many volunteers there sign up that we could not place them all. Right. And all of a sudden, we were like, how many people can we feed? Mm. So we didn't have any staff to facilitate that many meals. So, but you know what? Another church did. And God saved those people's mm -hmm. jobs mm -hmm. by using our ministry right. to help theirs. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to help keep their people employed during the first few weeks of the pandemic because we were using them to make meals for them. And that's that. exactly what we're talking about. When you're generous, yes. God can take it to another level. And, and, and exponentially more complex sure. than you ever dreamed and more effective uh, than you ever dreamed. I mean, all of a sudden we're blessing another church's staff and we're blessing people here in the community. And so we went from feeding 80 people a week yeah. to feeding 250 people a night, three nights a week. Right. So it went from 80 to 750. That wasn't math that I could have conceived of. And aren't we planning on another red stick somewhere? Yeah. I, I'm, I hope I'm not letting anything out of the no, bag. No, 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 no. You're, you're absolutely right because we have a greater need. Mm -hmm. We have a greater need in this mission field for more of that. And what I love about it is that you, nobody giving to that gives um, uh, without knowing it. Right. Um, they either designate their gift or we don't put mm -hmm. it towards that. Mm -hmm. So they have to want to give to it first. Sure. But let me tell you, God has blessed that ministry and it's been self-sustaining because of, God even gave us a person on that team that writes grants. And so we've gotten tens of thousands of dollars in grant money to help mm -hmm. us for, do that ministry. Mm -hmm. So God does things that are just God-sized things that mm -hmm. we can't do, <laughs> right? And, and gives us people and resources and volunteers and all this stuff. And so, but you know what? That make, that make God famous here. Mm -hmm. You know what they say about the church? And the church is the what? The body of Christ. That's right. They say, oh, aren't y'all the church that feeds people? Mm -hmm. I love hearing Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Aren't y'all the church? Aren't you the body of Christ that feeds people? Mm -hmm. The sower? The bread alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when you ask God for something and you put yourself in a place for him to use you, yeah, hold on. Hold right. on. Because <laughs> right. you have no idea how big his plan is. Oh, yeah. You know, my plans are always like this. And then I tell him what they are and he kind of laughs yeah. and says, this is what I got for you. Yes. And it's always exponentially bigger. So I think like the main part of this, though, is that when we are committed mm -hmm. to 
growing in our virtuous living to the point where we are becoming perfected in Christ in Christ's love, all of a sudden, that there a flip happens and it stops being about us and it starts being about the other person. There you go. And then true generosity takes place and true gratitude because you know what my experience has also been? No matter how generous I ever could be on that mission field, mm -hmm. every time I do it, I'm the one that walks away blessed. More I've blessed than I could I've have imagined. Yes, I've, <laughs> and so, I've seen the <laughs> smiles and the laughter yeah. and the enjoyment and the opportunity to minister to people. Yeah. It's, a, it's amazing to watch y'all. And that's really the secret to this virtuous life is that when you can know that God is going to use you mm -hmm. to make Christ famous, mm -hmm. and then because of that, you're even more blessed. Mm -hmm. You can walk around with a pretty serious attitude sure. of gratitude. Yes. You know? Well, because virtuous <laughs> life is not about us. Yeah. You know, being virtuous is about what we're doing with it, right. and what we're doing for other people. Yeah. That's just, true virtue. Just like you said, it's what you do with it. It's what you do with it. It's what you do with it. That's what we're hearing. So, as we wrap this up, here's what we've learned. Okay. We've learned that we're children of God. Right. We've learned that we are set apart. Absolutely. We've learned now that generosity and thankfulness go together mm -hmm. like birds of a feather. Yes. Right? They Absolutely. flock together. Yes. And we've learned that that generosity always comes back to us because of who Christ is. Mm -hmm. And now we can go and we can live lives of gratitude, always being thankful because we are always responding to the most generous act and of all time, and that's Jesus. Absolutely. All right, let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for this time that we've had to study your word, God, and to look into uh, virtuous living and, and how to make thankfulness the forefront and the, and the common denominator uh, in all of our days and, and in all of our interactions and in all of our relationships, and especially our relationship with you. And so, God, help us to respond uh, in, in generous thanksgiving to you for what you've done and for your son, Jesus. We pray it all in his name. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. There are many ways that you can give toward the mission of Broadmoor. You can go to broadmoormethodist.org slash giving to give safely and securely online. You can text BE MORE to 73256. And of course, you can also mail checks to our physical address at 10230 Molly Lee Drive, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70815.